Chapter 27, Locker. After thinking it over all night, lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, Eric awoke on Thursday morning with a clear decision in his mind. No way. It was too risky. He couldn't do it. But something happened at school to change his mind. The problem of Griffin Conley wasn't going to disappear on its own. Not unless Eric did something about it. The stolen bicycle made that clear. In school, Eric felt as if he had a target painted on his back. He could tell from the way kids treated him, the watchful distance they kept. A pressure was building, like air in an overinflated tire. Eric couldn't sit back and take it anymore. He had to act. During social studies, Eric's second to last period of the day, Principal Morris came to the door. She asked for Eric to step into the hallway. Ominously, she told him to bring his books. Everyone turned to watch Eric leave. He was bewildered at first, but then he thought, this must be about my bike. It wasn't. In the hallway, Mrs. Morris and Mrs. Ryan, the house leader, stood stone-faced. Eric, Mrs. Morris said, I'm afraid we've received some information today that we are required to follow up on. We need to take a look inside your locker. My locker? I don't. As you know, lockers are considered school property. We'd like you to come with us now. Yeah, sure. No one spoke as they walked down the hall and down the stairs, echoing with the click tap of Mrs. Ryan's shoes. Eric finally mustered the courage to ask, What do you think I have in there? A student came forward and reported that you had a knife, Mrs. Norris said. We take those claims very seriously. Eric was shocked. A knife? I never bring, he stopped walking. Who said this about me? Please, the principal said, gesturing with her arm. Let's just get through this. The hallway was deserted. Mrs. Ryan carefully searched his locker. She found an unholy mess, but no weapon. She pulled out Eric's backpack and handed it to Principal Morris, who zipped and unzipped every compartment. Just then, Mary appeared from around the corner. Eric, what's going on? This is a private matter, Mary, Mrs. Ryan said, her voice firm. Please return to your classroom. Mary locked worried eyes with Eric. But I'm okay, Eric said. It's a mistake. Mary nodded, still unsure. She turned and left. Officer Goldsworthy met them outside the boys' locker room. Eric was relieved that Mrs. Ryan and Mrs. Morris didn't intend to go inside. The officer nodded a greeting and said softly, Eric? He was in uniform today, probably because he was called over from the precinct. By now, Eric felt more relaxed. My locker is kind of gross, he half apologized. If Officer Goldsworthy had a sense of humor, it was not currently on display. Open it up, please. The only possible weapon found inside Eric's gym locker was an old pair of white socks. Eric could have killed someone by holding the socks under their nose. Death by foot sweat. For the final insult, Eric had to empty his pockets. When they emerged in the hallway, Officer Goldsworthy nodded at Principal Morris. False alarm, he said. She nodded, smiled briefly at Eric. I'm sorry we had to put you through this, she apologized. But I hope you understand that a weapons report is serious business. Eric understood, but he refused to acknowledge it. Instead, he stood expressionless, his teeth clenched together. You aren't going to tell me who said it, are you? The adults exchanged glances. No, Principal Morris answered. It's confidential. Otherwise, students might be reluctant to make a report. So will anything happen to him? I had to go through all this, be treated like a criminal just because somebody lied. It's not right. Eric worked to control his voice, but there was anger in it. A few students began trickling into the halls. Mrs. Ryan checked her watch. Seventh period should be out in a minute. Okay, Eric, you're free to go, Mrs. Morris said. Please understand, this isn't a part of the job that I enjoy. Yeah, me neither, Eric grumbled, heading off down the hall. He still had English with Mr. Schofield, and finally he could go home. A few kids from social studies, Pat Daly in particular, were eager to ask about what had happened. Eric was not in the mood, so he lied, made something up about a sick relative, and kept it short. He barely listened during English. Who was behind it, he wondered. Griffin Conley was the easy answer, but the report might not have come from him. That wasn't Griffin's style. He'd goad someone else into doing it. Eric thought of the dare game and of David Hallenbach 
and Cody in his stolen bicycle. His body vibrated with anger, knees pumping, feet tapping. Why would Griffin, if it was Griffin, put Eric through that just to embarrass him? Eric, a voice spoke and then louder. Mr. Hayes. What? Would you mind returning to this planet? Mr. Schofield admonished. Take out your book, page 116, please. Eric glanced around the room. Everyone had their novels out. Oh, sorry, Eric mumbled. But even with the book open to the right page, his thoughts journeyed elsewhere.